Alright, are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Oh, we're ready to shoot. Okay, everybody, quiet on the set. And action. Buongiorno, I'm Bruno Binarti, Lorenzo de Medici's faithful advisor. I am Giuliano de Medici, Lorenzo's brother who actually ruled with him for some time. I am Clarence Orsini, Lorenzo's wife. His lovely wife, might I remind you. Lorenzo de Medici, after working with him for so much years, he is truly magnificent. But truly, he is an amazing patron of art. And I can honestly not thank him enough for what he has done for the city of Florence. He is the most lovely creature in all of the world. Lorenzo is a tyrant. He is worse than pineapple on pizza. Lorenzo di Medici might be a tyrant, but he is sure a very wise tyrant. Hi, I am Jack Sklar of Hollywood, and this is a mockumentary on Lorenzo the Magnificent. It's so good to be back in my Medici palace. Wait, am I on camera? Yeah. Okay, we're good, my good son. If you know it, I'm <laughs> you are. <laughs> so, my name is probably put over there, and I may have probably said it before, but I'm gonna say my name again. I'm Bruno Bernardi, Lorenzo di Medici's faithful advisor. Who is Lorenzo di Medici? Lorenzo is a magnificent ruler of Florence. He was a brilliant statesman. One of the most magnificent people of the Renaissance. Alright, are you ready to shoot? Perfect, okay, let's get this over with because I really want to paint. Lorenzo di Medici, some people call him a tyrant, but if you ask me, he patronized a lot of artists like myself and got them to start up and really beautified the city of Florence in a way that nobody can imagine. So, I am in front of the Medici Palace. Well, not physically, this is actually a green screen. But this is behind the scenes on where Lorenzo di Medici did all the magic and patronized all of the artists that he did. And he really was the guy that made Florence the amazing city that it is. He patronized people like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and just recently Botticelli, who we interviewed just a few seconds ago. Now let's talk about the early reigning of his rule. So Lorenzo di Medici first began ruling along with his brother Giuliano di Medici, who we'll be interviewing soon from now, when his father Piero di Medici passed away. The two ruled and were actually pretty successful, except there was one group that really despised them. See, the Medici's, they got rich through international banking and doing deals with the Pope so they could be banking or despite being Christian. But there was another banking family called the Pazzi. The Medici's and the Pazzi hated each other more than Italians hate pineapple on pizza. Big Daddy of Rome, aka the Pope, Pope Sixtus IV, really agreed with the Pazzi on a lot of things and they both hated the Medici's, so they decided to team up. Well, yes, I tried to kill the Medici's, both of them, so I got one of the Pazzi named Francisco to go slap. Why did I hate them? You wanna see a cool dance? I want to speak to Francisco Pazzi, I'm sorry, we can't, he's not on the phone right now. He's taking a vacation somewhere in like Japan. Anyways, um, what I uh, can do is say how they killed them. Francisco tried to locate Giuliano and Lorenzo di Medici. He wanted to stop them. And eventually, he did locate them. And when he found them, he stopped them. Giuliano died, but Lorenzo di Medici survived. What if the Pazzi tried to kill me? I already hate the Pazzi, so like, it's not that good to begin with. So, like, it, it would just be bad for power, but 
if Lorenzo survives, which I hope he does, if we both try to get assassinated, if he does survive, he is probably the better ruler than me, and I really think that he can so beautify Florence and patronize so much people. But when Giuliano died, he was my brother-in-law, so like, it, was, it was really sad, and, you know. But Lorenzo was there to comfort me, and after he became ruler of Florence, and he was an, a gifted statesman, and the amount of beautiful things he did, Giuliano would be so proud of him. Seriously. So Lorenzo was now all on his own, but even with the death of Giuliano, and all the announced me and Clarins, he still did so much things to Florence and really beautified it to the max. And now, enter the new chapter. With the next chapter in Lorenzo di Medici's life, he was all on his own, but some of the stuff he did was incredible. He turned the city of Florence into a mockville to this. A beautiful city for so much people to walk through. But something else that he did was show his love for arts in a way that no other statesman of Florence can do. What Lorenzo did is that not only did he work on patronizing people like Leonardo da Vinci and Botticelli, who we'll speak to very soon, but Lorenzo de Medici built a school and libraries all about the arts. Yes, I have to say, Lorenzo de' Medici did patronize me and did get my startup on my career in the arts. He's the reason why I have all of this stuff behind me right now. It's pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. He is a true Renaissance person because of what he did. He said to all of these brand new artists, listen, I'm going to patronize you, sponsor you, and you're gonna make the best art Italy's ever seen. And it worked. And not only did this bring to the popularity of me, but it also brought to the popularity of people like Leonardo da Vinci. Now, I'm just finding this out now. Lorenzo built a school. He, he built a school? Yeah, oh, okay. he did. That's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, he built a school that, that the guy Michelangelo, not the turtle, but the artist went to when he was 15 and that really helped him with his works and him sculpting David and painting this roof of the chapel. It really, really got him kick-started and Lorenzo's love for the arts really helped this and the reason why people call him magnificent is because he brought fame to people like me and Leonardo, which is very cool. Now, there's no denying that everything that Lorenzo did was so good, but something was up with him in the late 80s and early 90s, and eventually I found out what was happening. The answer can be found in his very cerebral nose. He had a bone disorder, and he began to die because of that. Now, in 1492, <laughs> Think about it, but in 1492, my lovely husband, Lorenzo de Medici, passed away. Yeah, and I, I couldn't bear it. Lorenzo did so much for the city of Florence, and it's just when he died, it, it took away something in my heart, and it took away something in everybody's heart, including the artists that he met and the people that he was with, and probably the people that tried to kill him, too. Now, I remember, and he was in Hragi with... Yes. Wait, you're going there right now? Crew, we're going to Kragi, let's go. I'm currently in Kragi, the city that Lorenzo di Medici died in. And, well, yes, Lorenzo di Medici took the hearts out of many people when he passed away in 1492. His legacy was even bigger than him, I'm gonna say it. So, we interviewed the people that we interviewed before. What were some of the stuff that Lorenzo di Medici did that really had an influence on you and the Renaissance? Lorenzo di Medici patronized so much artist and, and brought the Renaissance to a place that it can never have been without him. 
but Don Bozo survived an assassination attempt. I'm not gonna give him any respect for it because I never have, but like, I'm impressed. I'm mean, very, I'm very impressed. Lorenzo built a school which Michelangelo went to, which really did a lot for the Renaissance. He beautified Florence. He was an incredible ruler. He was an incredible statesman. But this is where he died. And this is where it's, this is where the death of a Renaissance man happened. And when he did die, it was, it was, it was, man, I, sad. Everything that he did was so good on him that I wish he was here, you know what I mean? So all in all, Lorenzo di Medici is one of the most interesting people in the Italian Renaissance and everything he did was for the good of the people of Florence. And we can only praise him for his impact on history and what he did for all, for all of the Renaissance and for everything in the future to come. <laughs> yes, Lorenzo. Ghirlando Sorvaliano is still here, ready to overthrow your Medici dynasty now that you are gone. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait, a uh, girl, Ghirlando? What, what, what do you want, Jack? I'm in the middle of ranting right now. Um, the show's over. Oh. But listen, just you wait, get off my show, fine.